Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent. This is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 98, where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. I'll do my best to answer them. Let's just get right into it. This one is called A Simple Suggestion. Hey Mark, I've been watching some of your stuff and I find it quite interesting, so thank you for putting it out there for anyone to watch. I watched one of the videos where you show the astronauts out in space and there is that bubbles that float around them. The one guy that you guys say that they are water. It got me thinking, if it is water, as NASA says, why is it not freezing instantly? Uh, since they tell us it is like minus 200 degrees out there. Then thanks to one of your videos where you talk about the vacuum in space, it got me wondering, what does water do in a vacuum? Hmm, there you go. Turns out, based on modern science, water instantly boils violently in a vacuum, and so does blood. There are plenty of sites to confirm, and also a few videos that show it as well. So if that were water bubbles and that they don't look that big to me, I don't think English is this guy's first language, by the way. In fact, that's yeah, Stefan Kulev. Uh, um, water should boil in milliseconds. You should not be able to even see them since they are so small. Once they boil, the water vapor should f freeze instantly. There was a site that was talking about some astronaut releasing urine in space and seeing it boil and then freeze into thousands of small ice crystals. Apparently, there is a video about it, but I can't seem to find it. I thought the above is pretty interesting. You might know it already or not. One more thing. Seems like a lot of folks out there think that air stays on Earth because of gravity. Yeah, I know, right? Somehow gravity makes it stay here, yet you start a fire and all the smoke goes straight up. Yet to see it stick to the ground, shouldn't the same gravity keeping the air down to earth keep the fire smoke down where your feet are? Mm. Take care. Thanks for all your hard work, Stefan. Thanks, Stefan. That's awesome. All right, let's go to this one called Saw Your Video. Hey, I want to join whatever you are doing. <laughs> That's from John Robert. Awesome. Great. I There's not really a club you can join. Uh, just start meeting, you know, reaching out to people. Join Hangouts. Uh, email people in your, your area or go to meetups. Definitely. This one's called A Few More Questions. And this is a little big, but I can read some of it. Hello, Mark. Thanks so much for calling me. Oh, no, no, I can't read this one. This is a follow-up to a phone call. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, we will. I will not read that one on air. Sorry about that, guys. And that one's gone, too. This one's called Info Request. Mark, I hope you can point me in the right direction. I left you a voicemail today. My name is Stephen. I'm an author and I teach how the um, Fed and the IRS can be used by the private individual to operate as a private banker. <laughs> that sounds a little dicey. Included in my course, I would like to offer information about the flat earth and how we have been deceived in the same manner I do with banks, the court, and the Fed. I've included an outline of my online membership course, Walk on Water System, and I'll include a copy of my book, Wealth of the Wicked. My major questions are, and you can just point me to some good YouTube videos. One, what is the theory on the size and location of the sun and moon as it relates to the solar eclipse? I would look at DITRH. I would look at Globusters. I would look at Jaronism. I would look at Zeteticism.com. Those are all good. Uh, two, is the sun a sphere or more of a directed light like a flashlight? Ooh, that's a tough call, right? I, I would go with probably the latter. Or is it a firmament functioning as a lens that would cast a shadow on half of the earth at one time? It could be a combination of all three men. There's some optical effects happening up there that are not exactly known to us at this point. And number three, uh, has anyone explained a change in direction of the vortex of water draining in the northern hemisphere versus the southern? Thank you very much, Stephen Glenn. And uh, yeah, let me, let me address that one. In fact, maybe I'll send him a link to the video. There was a great video on this made a couple of years ago by a giant YouTube channel called Smarter Every Day. And it is, it is not a flat earth video, but the guy was curious. He gets questions like this and he has millions of subscribers so he can afford to do it. And what he did was he set up these giant kids waiting pools, one in the Southern Hemisphere, one in the um, Northern Hemisphere. And he did a simultaneous 
real-time video, like a FaceTime uh, experiment, where he put a, a, they constructed a single drain in the center, made sure the water was completely still. You know, they set it there for hours, and then instead of, to make sure they weren't even putting ripples in the water, they used an eyedropper and put food coloring to mark off where the water was. And they pulled the drains at the exact same time and watch and see what happens. And what they noticed was, was there a clockwise versus counterclockwise motion? Yes, but he said it was so unbelievably gradual that that he could not, he could absolutely could not endorse the whole drain spinning, you know, toilets going in one direction and the sinks going in one direction versus northern and southern hemisphere. So look it up if you get a chance. Uh, that's that's what I'd recommend. If anyone wants to watch that experiment, it's really cool. He does a nice job with his videos. Still not a flat earther yet, but whatever. And you can, uh, it's called, just look up uh, Smarter Every Day Toilet Water. And you'll you'll find the experiment. It's really a cool experiment. I highly encourage people to, to watch it. This one is called Hank in Shoreline, Washington. Hi, Mark. I'm trying to get on YouTube. My name is Hank. I have three cat videos. Ha ha. No, seriously. <laughs> nice. I see the potential for reaching people and pointing them to Yahweh. I have my testimony that people could hear. I'd like to find out if there is an area FE meetup. One or start one in shoreline. Uh, Effie and Yahweh go hand in hand. Many facets, one diamond. Maybe you could help. My channel growth is a ways away. Okay, I'm not looking to have a Salvation Flat Earth channel tomorrow, but it would be awesome as this growth pr process happens. Reaching folks, opening eyes to the undeniable truths. Mark, you are an inspiration. I'll never be able to thank you enough for your content, pioneering the way and setting a real good example. I created a Facebook group called Seattle Shoreline Flat Earth Meetup, please, and send me 12 slides, anything to promote, promote you, Rob Skiba, and Effie. I'm having a deja vu moment. Nice. Thanks, Hank. P.S. Freshman recruiter. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's from my um, my speech that I was supposed to give in Denver. And yeah, there's a lot. We've had a whole bunch of meetups in Seattle uh, and uh, the Seattle area. It's so just just keep an eye out. There'll they'll be more soon. I guarantee it. All right, this one's called "What on Earth Happened." Uh, it's pretty big, so I will not read the whole thing, but I will read a couple of paragraphs of it, uh, and I won't give you the name of who it's who, who it is. Um, good day to you, my brother. This is I'm not going to say the name. Uh, from Northern California. I just heard about what happened at the 2018 FE conference yesterday while driving my roots. I actually went on a flat earth fast on YouTube over the weekend. I was looking forward to listening to all the speakers on YouTube yesterday, excited who the mystery guest turned out to be. Well, needless to say, the first thing YouTube suggested when I put the name in search window was a video called Why Mark Sargent Left the 2018 FE Conference. So I listened to that hour plus broadcast from Mark from New York. I was not only pleased to hear how you handled the the whole thing but you did it with honor and dignity and integrity after sharing your heart on the matter at dinner and being met with what seemed to be blank stares and closed mouths you went to your room thought and prayed over the matter then you did the only right thing you could have done in my opinion and that was to not force your opinion on the others but left the conference holding true to your convictions that you had with the information you knew at the time the whole thing was even to me after watching robbie's interview with this person had an air of deception about it that i could not shake he, he was even laughing during his presentation at the beginning of the conference. In my opinion, you had every right to act as you saw fit, holding true to your convictions without compromise, and for that, I commend you. Um, uh, so anyway, after hearing uh, all the story over several YouTube videos, I finally decided to call in your Strange World show for the first time after listening for almost three years and give some words of encouragement. And I won't, I won't give away who this person was. Um... Uh, da, da, da. It was cool listening to Michelle. Da, da. And love the end of this. So please let it be known that this man has been motivated by not only the lies concerning our cosmology, but the lies of the devil that convinces people to, to take their own lives. I now go out and boldly share the truth that the gospel of Jesus Christ can only bring, because like this movement, Christ is rooted in truth by sharing the gospel i may unwittingly show someone who i don't even know a hope that is above all hopes i'm getting more and more uh, brave with the flat truth smacks when they come up and they have been for some reason it seems christians are the hardest ones to convince of our biblical cosmology 
Anyway, I get very inspired by Nathan Roberts, Rob Skiba, Dean Odell. All I can say is it's on. May the Holy Spirit be with me. Otherwise, everything I do be in vain regardless of the lies I expose. And what if the lies are as numerous as the stars in the sky or the sands of the sea? So in closing, please, please keep up the good work, Mark. Stay true to your convictions the good Lord gives you and never be afraid to change your mind or opinion when new information comes your way. Uh, did I just say that to you? Sorry, but you know what I mean. Respectfully. And I'm not going to say his names, but, but thank you for that. And I did read your entire letter and uh, it is it is much appreciated. And I will put that in my to-do pile in case he doesn't catch this. This one's called KISS. Mark, we are acquaintances for three and a half years. I know you, but you do not know me. Oh boy. Usually I get scared when I get letters like this. Uh, I understand why and what you did in F, uh, FE 2018. I get it, but where we live and the one who made it and us is out of our box. You are a flat earth star. And as such, you might want to consider a deeper relationship with the master maestro, you know, the true man show designer. Oh, I gotcha. If you want more, and he gave me his phone number, Shalom uh, Edai. P.S. Uh, thank you. You have made me realize that I have an obligation to deal with my brother who suffers from depression. I do not. Uh, so I did not get it, but you have opened that door. Cool. Awesome. This one's called Mark Sargent. Dear Mark Sargent, your last billing address is on record at 600 Manhattan Drive, C3, Boulder, Colorado. We appreciate your business and would love to supply you with a 5% discount on your next filling with us. Uh, th please use the coupon code, blah, blah, blah. Okay. The reason why I saved that email is I have to mention, don't ever, if you're going to buy something online, just be, just be aware that you will be on a list, uh, um, some sort of purchase list or a potential sales list forever. What I did was for my survival, uh, you know, cause I do a survival guide and for my survival supplies, I decided, cause I wasn't going to try to fake it through with a fake injury at the doctor's office. I thought, okay, you know, for my first aid kit, maybe some painkillers would be nice to, to add to the thing. And yeah, you can, you can go online and there's all sorts of, you know, you can pay money and buy painkillers just about anywhere. And when I did pretty much every month after that, they were calling me. And, and, you know, say, Hey, you want to buy more painkillers? Hey, you want to, and I get it. You know, if you're addicted to painkillers, you're, you're going to be like, yeah, give me more painkillers. But I'm going, no, stop calling me. Stop calling me. And every month for, um, years, I mean, I haven't been in C3 for, oh geez, long time years. And they, uh, I finally, I, they, I finally got a hold of this woman who was, who was calling me and I said, look, is there, what can I do? What can I do to get off this list? And she, and she was really honest with me. I don't know why, but she says, look, I can pull you off the list. And it was, um, in East Indian woman. She was like, I can pull you off the list, but in about a year, you're going to be put back on the list. They just recycled the whole thing. You're, and I go, I go, what do you mean? And she goes, you're, she goes, you're never off the list permanently. And I go till, I mean like ever. And she goes until this phone number well until this well initially it was my phone number and then she goes no this email address like they haven't called in a long time uh but she goes this the email address you use it, she goes because you know that takes nothing to send uh she goes they will send you stuff literally until that email address isn't there anymore until they get a bounce back uh you know the email address doesn't doesn't exist you will be on that list forever so i thought that was interesting moving on this one's called two minute video request and a question Mark, my son, born in the 90s and a millennial, said he would only watch a Flat Earth video two minutes or less, and I can't find one. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, there are some out there. Uh, does one exist, or could you make one? I've been looking for quite a while and can't find such a video. Also, I've never... That really depresses me, by the way, <laughs> that, that a millennial would say, nah, it's not, if it's not under two minutes, I'm, I'm not watching it. Ugh. Also, I've never understood how I can be standing on the earth during daylight hours and looking at both the sun and the moon, yet the earth supposedly is casting a, a shadow on the moon. I would think this would be a flat earth proof, but I've never heard anyone discussing it. Is there some scientific reason for this I don't know about? Thanks, Chandler. Uh, and yeah, so I'm, I'm referring Chandler for both those questions, both the, the two-minute video and the question to DITRH. Uh, because DITRH loves, he, he gets that. It's like people's attention span is really, really limited. So a lot of his stuff is, um, 
is less than two minutes, and some less than three minutes. So I sent this guy a link to, you know, I said, I go, look at the ITRH. They're super, super short, probably the shortest stuff that's out there. He prides himself on it. And then I also pointed him to the short, flatter short list for new people. Yeah, there's some stuff in there. I don't know if anything's two minutes, but there's some that are five. And come on, five minutes is that not, not that long, in my opinion. Moving on. This one's called Flat Earthers Tell Logan Paul You're Not One of Us. Awesome. That's a story that just came out this morning. Um, uh, that's from Jason. Thank you, Jason, for sending that. Believe it or not, it's a follow-up to the Daily Beast article. Same girl that, that did the kind of exclusive where she grabbed him outside of the uh, conference, uh, Logan, and, and gave him that wonderful, uh, cringeworthy interview. And it's literally called Flat Earthers Tell Jake Paul You're Not One of Us. Okay, now, the reason why I bring this up is uh, twofold. One, I'm not even in it at all. That may come later. Uh, but I'm not even in this article. What was interesting was the actual Flat Earth Society, you know, the one that we say, uh, you know, don't go to because they're controlled opposition or they, they don't care. Or they're just apathetic. <clears throat> I know that's redundant, uh, but it, it's bad. And that's exactly what they the, the Flat Earth Society actually contacted her. You read the article and, and said, oh, yeah, we are in no way, shape or form affiliated affiliated with with Logan Paul. That should speak volumes to anyone in the Flat Earth community because if the Flat Earth Society, the ones that we don't talk to, if they're coming out, if they're actually reaching out to the press and saying, yeah, Logan Paul, no, 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 no. If they're saying that, that's a bad sign. And that's going to be only one of many, I am sure, before it is over. Moving on. Uh, let's see. Jason Johnson also sent me another headline, which is very interesting. And that was science behind the fiction. The flat earth movement is growing. It's very scary. And that's an article at sci-fi.com, S-Y-F-Y.com. As you can imagine, they are a science based thing. And what happened was, is that the documentary behind the curve, which was released uh, a week ago today on streaming, you know, you can get it on Google and Amazon and, um, iTunes. And he and so now you're going to get a wave of reviewers that are reviewing it because now they don't have to go to the theater or a film festival. They can just review it at their home. And this guy reviewed it. And, uh, you know, it was pretty, pretty long. But, you know, of course, it was going to be from the science standpoint. It's like, what's happening here? And a lot of good quotes. So check that out if you get a chance. Go to sci-fi.com. This one's called Pendulum Question. Mark, I hope you are well. I came to the FE a few months ago and I am staggered what I have learnt. <laughs> he actually spelled L-E-A-R-N-T about it and it appears so obvious now. I introduced it to my dad who thought I was going mad until a week later. He wouldn't talk to me for a week. He said he now believed the earth would be flat. Yes, perfect. There's your invasion of the body snatchers right there, which is you're crazy, you're crazy, you're crazy. Yes, it's flat. Join us. Join us. Seriously, that's that's how it works. One of my friends has pointed to me the large swinging pendulum in the Chicago Museum as proof the earth is spinning. While it's complete nonsense, how do you answer the question as I would like to go back to him uh, with an answer? Many thanks. Keep up the good good work, Zach. Uh, yeah, Zach, if you're listening. The uh, two, two things there. Uh, first off, one, what starts the pendulum? That, that's the big one. What keeps the pendulum? Remember, because the pendulum, it, you know, um, um, loss of, of uh, momentum, it, the pendulum is going to, it should get lesser and less, you know, the, the swing, the swing radius should get less and less. So what, first off, how is it started? How is it, what's powering it to keep it going? Because it is mechanical, right? It's, it's basically a, a giant clock mechanism. And they've had these for years and years and years. Um, what, what's doing that? Because that right there makes it not objective. And the other thing would be the, um, which I, I, sorry, this is one of the things where I kind of pass the buck, which is have the average person on the street, 99% of the people on the street don't even know what the, the folk cult pendulum does, doesn't even know what it means. Um, in fact, try to get a scientist to explain the folk cult pendulum to the average person mainstream science they can't even explain it i mean the, it's it's lost you're you're basically talking static to the average person so it doesn't matter uh, it's 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 an argument that can, we can't we can't neither side it's kind of a push we can't really give an explanation that the general public likes to debunk it and science can't give a good explanation of of what it's supposedly go, trying to prove so for me it's like eh 
say what you want. It's not going to matter because the, the average person doesn't know, doesn't care. I know it seems like a kind of a blow off answer, but it's true. I, I've seen too many people just kind of, um, this one is called, sorry, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom again because I'm jumping around. This one is called meetup mark thanks again for advertising the meetup it was a huge success we had 47 people show up to the main meetup oh yeah and some of us did uh, went to lookout mountain beforehand awesome that was really really great uh again if anyone wants me to do a meetup all you have to do is send me the location and the time and the contact info and i will totally do it for you this one's called shortwave radio ping off the canopy and it's from Alan, uh, but Alan, and it, I don't get this very often, but I got to call you out. Look, if you're going to send an email and I know we all do it, it's, it's, it's one of the bane, it's, it's the horrible things, of the internet, everybody does it every freaking year. And that is, you forgot the attachment or you forgot the link. It's like, look at this, Alan, you get so excited to send something, something, and then you, you don't send the link. And then I have to write back and, and say, oh, Hey, was there supposed to be something attached? This one's called Aerospace Engineer Expectations versus Reality. Hey, Mark, Virgil from Traveler's Rest. My algorithms on the YouTube brought this video to my feed. It's a salty ex-aerospace engineer ranting about his expectations he had before graduating and what the reality was. The quote he chose to explain his expectations for the first day at his new employer was, Where's my lab coat? LOL. He believed he would be designing and mastering equations to solve issues. Instead, he received sheets of data and was told to manipulate. As I'm typing, he says he knows people he worked with who had spent hours making spreadsheets to reduce the data that's already known, otherwise known as engineer busy work. It's in your DNA to build stuff. You want to be an engineer. You want to make stuff. It's nuts. Hmm. All right. And he says, quote for the peanut gallery, want to know what's crazy? I can go outside and confidently point out Mars, but now I doubt I could ever go back to believe it's something to land on. And who said that? Uh, Virgil and his wife. <laughs> oh, Virgil to his wife. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, Virgil. This one's called First Man Poster, the UK version. Hey, Mark, I saw a movie poster for the First Man and the text on it, at least the UK version, says experience the impossible journey to the moon. Ah... I thought this might make a good slide uh, for your slideshow. Take care, Mark, David in UK. And I will click on it real quick. Yeah, experience the impossible journey to the moon. I don't know. The, the text is so small. I don't think I can use it for a slide. But yeah, I don't know a lot of people that saw it or cared. Great. Good stuff. This one's called Flat Earth Question from a Flat Earther. Hi, Mark. I love the work you do. Been thinking about something you may be interested to do with a flat earth. Can I share... Thanks, Mitch. Oh, cliffhangers. You guys know what I think about them. If you're going to say that, you better give me you better give me the goods. And that is, can I, you know, so what he's doing here is saying, you know, just write me back and I'll give you what I should have given you in the first email. You don't have no idea how many emails I get. I, I So I no, no cliffhangers. No. But thank you, Mitch, for writing initially. So if you're listening, send me the freaking stuff. This one's called Sun Rays Are Rake. R-A-K-E-D. Raked? Really? Uh, Mark, does it prove the sun is close by when you see the sun beams going off in multiple direction? Oh, you're, you're talking corpuscular rays. And yes, I think it does. I, I think the sun is instanced. I think it's unique for everybody. And I think it's very close. I, and if you don't know what instancing is, look it up. But yeah, the corpuscular rays. Yeah, the, the rays, sun rays shouldn't be going off in all directions. I know science will try to explain it one way or the other. Anyway, that's from Matt Galloway. Thank you, Matt. This one is called uh, Flat Earth Question. Uh, oh, I did write him back. I'm sorry. I did write him back and I say, you know what? I'll give you this one break. I don't do this for everybody, but in this case... Instead of the cliffhanger, he he actually wrote back. So here we go. Ready? Uh, well, the other day I was watching a YouTube video where a flat earther was explaining to Philip 
Schofield in the UK, this morning's TV program about a plane stop starting from the top of a globe Earth and flying around towards the bottom. And when the plane gets to the bottom, it will be flying upside down to an observer looking from space. He asked Phil if planes flying upside down make sense, and Phil seems to think it does. Hmm, okay, and the excuse for it is not feeling like you're upside down is always, that is gravity. By the way, when I was 13 years old, I wondered why people directly below us don't feel like they were upside down, so I asked my brother, who had said uh, without thinking, oh, it's gravity, stupid. So my thought is this, as you obviously know, if you were at a deep swimming pool and swam to the bottom and put an inflated ball there and let it go, the ball rises up fast and pops uh, out of the water with force. So in a way, the water can with water, certain things can act like gravity, or in this case, reverse gravity. So basically, if you were to put an aeroplane seat with someone strapped in it uh, in the water and then turn upside down, that should be a very similar experience to flying upside down in a plane, right? The person on the seat should not feel much different to an upside down flight but the blood would be rushing to his head. Your senses would say it's not liking it, especially when your head's expanding. So if I do a headstand and the blood rushes to my head, oh, that's gravity doing that. Okay, I stand on my head in water. Why is the force of the water trying to pull me up, allowing the blood to rush to my head? Can't be gravity. So you probably thought about this, but it kind of, but kind of proves that if we were upside down on a globe, regardless of gravity, we'd know we were upside down. Am I off in my thinking here? Please let me know. Thanks. <laughs> Mitch, you're making my head hurt because no one's ever proposed that 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 test, which is doing a handstand in a pool uh, in a flight suit or or a can an airplane seat upside down. Yeah, you're going to you're going to get mixed things when you're when you're in water. Definitely because yes, you're you're part of you, the oxygen in your in your blood is going to want to pull you up. Uh, so I don't think you can get necessarily a head rush if you're, in fact, I know this because divers dive all the time and I don't think they get head rushes because they're pointing straight down when they're, when they're diving. Uh, that's a good question, Mitch. I don't, I don't know the answer to this. It's the, I love, I love the fact that he's thinking in an experiment that's way out there. That's awesome. Uh, if anyone wants to do this test, please let me know how it turns out. Uh, this one's called Paranormal Junkies does another flat earth live stream. I don't know the angle, but it's right. Oops. Sorry. One sec. Paranormal Junkies. Mark, I don't know the angle, but it's right. He deleted his previous live stream a few weeks ago. Maybe he's getting thicker skin. He has quite a following, and considering its content is making all the Spock fans uh, have an Opie tantrum. And that's from Joshua. Oh, yeah, authentic intent. And the video is called, and it's unavailable. Darn it. All right. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, do you have any videos on how the stars work on our flat Earth? And that's from Darren. I am, no, I don't personally. Uh, I, I can tell you that it's it's a giant projection system. They're just lights in the sky. Um, so the, the thought is, and you know, that's always been the big question, and that is, is the Earth moving or is the sky moving? Uh, if you're in the whole flat Earth thing, well, then you know that the sky is moving. And the star, again, no different than a planetarium. So if you go into a planetarium, you look up on the sky and you see the stars moving and the planets moving and the moon going across. And you say, well, I'm in a planetarium. And then you walk outside of that planetarium. Who is to say you just aren't in a much bigger planetarium? That's really it. So the stars are just giant, wonderful, high resolution lights in the sky, which we even when we're zooming into now, look kind of look like they're underwater, which is even more cool. Next one is called More NASA BS. Hello, Mark. It's been just over a month that I jumped down the rabbit hole. And ever since then, every time I pull up the Google app, there's always been an article pertaining to space or the globe Earth. I feel it's as if they're trying to give us proofs of the globe. This is the type of stuff that is happening since they're always listening. Yes, that's true. This article just popped up tonight. Figured you would get a good laugh. Sending the link. Maybe you could touch on it in next week's episode. I tried listening to my first live stream last night, but I heard a rerun. Listened to the YouTube this morning and heard you had some technical problems. Next week, I will try to catch the live show and maybe call in for a quick chat. Uh, quick chat uh, regards Brian Hoffman. And the articles, yeah, actually from NASA.gov. And it's called... The space station transits our sun. 
Yep, this composite image, opening line there, made from nine frames, shows the International Space Station with a crew of three on board in silhouette as it transits the sun at roughly five miles per second. Yep. Awesome. NASA is so great. And thank you for that, Brian. This one's called First Man Movie. Mark, interesting they claim the American flag isn't in the movie, but is in the trailer. Yeah, I, I should probably mention this one. And you've some of you guys have already heard me talk about this, which is part of the reason why the American audience, the American media didn't jump on this movie as much is because it was directed by a Canadian. The star was Canadian, Ryan Gosling. And they really tailored it for the world market to the point where the iconic American flag on the moon was not shown during the entire movie, which was very, very interesting. And the studio and the director backed that decision. Now, I know it's easy for the director because he's Canadian, and this, but not the studio. Uh, and the, the defense was, it's like, well, it's a human achievement. It's not an American achievement. And I come back and say, no, 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 no. I go, if anyone deserves the credit for faking the moon landing, it should be the Americans. We, it's, 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 it was flags all over the place. We love, you know, it was like, it is like the American iconic thing that's tied, it's tied to us. You know, it's like, oh yeah, the Americans went to the moon. The Americans were the only people who went to the moon. Nobody else went to the moon. Uh, and when we all found out later that, oh, it was fake, why, why would you defer that to other people? And, and there was some discussion. It's like, well, they were actually considering, um, you know, putting the United Nations flag on, on the moon instead of the American. I'm going, no, they weren't. Not even close. I mean, come on. The, the United Nations was, wasn't even that old when uh, it was like 20 years old when the, the Americans supposedly did their thing. The, the United Nations flag. If, in fact, why didn't you bring up? If you were going to do it, you, all you had to do is put a little United Nations sticker on there somewhere. No, no. There was no United anything except for America. So, yeah. It, so, and yeah, the, you know, the first people that jumped on it was Fox News. Shouldn't surprise anybody. They were like, you know, they're all rah, rah, go team. So, yeah. Well, if you get if you check it out, and I have not watched it yet because I don't I don't think it's even on DVD yet. When it comes out, let me know, you guys. I'm sure you'll hate it, but we'll use the footage and just rip it to shreds. This one's called No Subject, and it's a link to. It's from David, David Schmidt, and it's. It's it's oh Betty Manassi. He sent me a link to a song. Satisfaction, Skazi's metal mix. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he knows what I listen to. Oh, I know. Yeah, because you, oh, you picked up on it. That, that's some of my stuff I listen to. Yep, I'm a big electronica guy. I've been for a long, long time. This one's called Strange World Episode 2 through 4 and Survival PDF. Hey, Mark, I would like to get a copy of the Survival Guide when you get a chance to send it. Thank you. Regards, Brian. And yeah, if you guys want a free survival guide, all you have to do is email me and say survival guide and I will shoot it to you. It's only two megs. Uh, also, if you want the five science questions that I asked in my Canadian speech, I can send those to you as well or the 12 slides from just Jack. Uh, but if you want the coast to coast interviews, which I'm not allowed to post on YouTube, you have to email me and say, uh, give me the coast to coast interviews and I will send them to you through WeTransfer because, you know, my email caps out at 25 megs per email. I don't know what yours is, but I think 25 is light nowadays considering we have high speed broadband to the nth degree, but whatever, I'm not going to whine. This one's called Psychology and Flat Earth. Mark, I think bringing up the psychology and suspension of disbelief narrative early on on in a presentation with a flat earth newbie is highly valuable. It addresses the transitive state from point A, globe supposition, to point B, flat earth probability. It's the link for the many who worship this psychology stuff. I don't. Let's say that they've taken psych in school. So it's a comfort zone where they can park their thoughts while adjusting and making the transition. It's their new basis for a foothold in the new paradigm and to boot when co-joined with image recognition as part of the forensics of the matter, it gives them positive reinforcement and bragging rights as well. That's well-written and that's from Steve in New York City. You know what? Pretty intelligent guy. I get calls from him every once in a while. That's awesome. Thanks, Steve. Hopefully you're listening to that. 
This one's called a new FE young person making FE videos. Mark, just an FYI, just want to share a channel you may not know about. I found her through the comments in Delano's latest FE video. She's doing her best. Search her channel for her FE videos and she does different topics. I think so many young people are going to be making videos like this and the Globe Defenders will attack in the comments. Thus, I think each new channel, no matter how tiny, needs to be acknowledged by us and supported. This is why I'm sharing this with you. And that's from Carolyn Gutman Day. And I will click on the video. And oh yeah, I'm already on her. She's, uh, uh, her channel is called Deanna Larray. And that's D-E-A-N-N-A -N -N -A space L-A-R-A-E. And I commented and she already gave me a little heart and Patricia also commented and Flat Earth Court Music and quite a few uh, other people. It's, it's a, it's a good video and, um, yeah, fantastic. Great to, great to see her do her stuff. Hopefully she'll get no deck. In fact, I'm pretty sure I subbed on top of it. This one's called Flat Photo Proof. And... There we go. Hi, Mark. I'm forwarding my email to you moments after confirming that the image is attached properly by sending it to me first. Both, both email addresses are mine, so you are the only other recipient. This is exciting and will be worth your time. Have a blessed day, Cindy. And what do we got? Yep, the Earth Curve Calculator is one picture. Picture. And there are ones of video. It's 29 megs, and I will watch that when I get a chance. So I will put that in my to-do pile which grows. This one is called Proof Equals Flat Earth Flights by Matthew. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. First, I would like to thank you for your extensive work on bringing truth to me and many others. The reason for this email is a simple fact I discovered all on my own, all caps, <laughs> by free thinking and questioning what I've been told. Here it is, Mark. If a person flying from California, it's going to be like a, this is going to be like a math question, guys. If a person flying from California to New York, taking five hours to complete the trip, and then flies back from New York to California, the trip still takes as much time, five hours. How is that possible? The trip back should be much shorter if the earth is round. If earth is spinning in an Eastern rotation, then flight to New York. I know you guys know this already, but I got to I got to read it for him. Uh, you would try to catch up New York as it's moving east, the direction of the flight when leaving California, heading to New York. When heading back to California from New York, California is heading east with a spinning earth coming forward as, uh, as you are in flight happen, uh, heading west. It would be an obvious shorter return trip heading back to California from New York. Doesn't it sound like he's like on a lot of caffeine when, when he's writing this? But this doesn't happen, all caps. Earth is flat and stationary, all caps. And that is why it takes the same amount of time to fly east to west and return flight west east, the same approach. I believe this is the great point for the proof that the earth is flat, all caps, and I have not heard this argument made by anyone else prior to me. So I'm sharing this with you because you have the resources to share this with many others to bring truth to everyone. I'm not sure if I explained this well enough to make sense, but if you have any questions, please feel to call me. I respect everything you do and think you are doing mankind a wonderful thing and bringing the truth to everyone. If I can do anything at all to help, uh, please ask me. I'm located in Sacramento, California. Sincerely, Matthew Whitmire. He's in Fair Oaks. Uh, if you have any flat earth stickers or t-shirt I can support, please send me to the address above and the total price of any shipping and material costs. Thank you very, very much for your time. Awesome. Th 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 thank you, Matthew. It's, it's really, really great. And yes, people have talked about it for, for quite a while, actually. But again, I appreciate that he came to this conclusion on his own. Remember, I say, do your own research and ask questions. That's great. Great stuff. This one's called... Contact info for authentic intent. And waiting and unknown error. Okay. It goes, hey, Mark, Virgil from Traveler's Rest. I can't remember his name, but his YouTube channel is Authentic Intent. I'm a huge fan. I have a plug connection on high quality collegiate logo socks. And I've been selling them for the last couple of years on the side. Anyway. I've been waiting and finally had some Minnesota Golden Gopher socks. Sometimes people don't want to engage him in fear of being mocked. Wanted to send him these socks to help his Golden Gopher activism. Maybe could use them as a bribe or prize. Thanks, Mark Virgil. Um, okay, so if anyone... I'll, I'll give out Virgil's email address. And, and if anyone wants to shoot this to um, Authentic, please please do. It's W H I T T E. D, so witted lawn 
care, L-A-W-N, care at gmail.com. Somebody shoot that to Authentic Attend if you get a chance, if, if you're, you're listening to this. And um, hopefully those guys can hook up over the Golden Gopher socks. This one's called Don't Read On Air. See, that's perfect, by the way. If you don't want me to read this thing on air, I absolutely will not read it on air. This one's called Neil deGrasse Tyson and Michio Kaku Star Talk. Mark, the aerospace engineer video was okay. The data quotes were probably the best. In this video, they touch on gravity waves and ponds. Time travel, it's literally a sci-fi uh, BS fest. Uh, NDT explains the Michio has contact with deities after Kaku references that God follows the laws of physics. <laughs> God follows the laws of physics. Oh, that is a t-shirt right there. Uh, because, oh, I'm sorry, didn't God it create the laws of physics? Uh, yeah, because God does, has to follow those laws. Uh-huh, yeah. And, and let's see, it, I knew we'd find them. We predicted them 100 years ago. If we didn't find those gravity waves, we'd be in, in deep crap. Michio Kaku. Sorry, Mark, this one's gold. Yeah, okay, I gotta click on this video here. I gotta give you the title of it real fast. The title of the video is called Michio Kaku with Neil deGrasse Tyson on Time Travel. Oh, wow, they released it October 4th, 2018. It's got 86,000 views, and it was released by Sky Today. Great. This one's called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark, I think it's time we finally brought down this cabal. I'm a Kenyan. And I was really dumbstruck when I finally realized that this globe thing is just some grand deception. I decided to make a YouTube video about it. I've been trying to spread awareness to other students in my university. Here's the link. Help me grow some traction so it'll be easier to get some people on board. Let's do this once and for all. All right, so I will click on the link. And it says, I'll give it a thumbs up right away. It's 19 to 0. It's called True Lies 2, an international conspiracy. I'll put my mic down briefly because I'm going to say... Hey, I missed this because flat, all caps, earth is not in the title. Please put it in for others. Long live flat earth. All right, comment. All right, there you go. So anyway, it's called True Lies 2, an international conspiracy. And I will sub to him as well. And again, that's why it, get, it gets missed. It, the channel is called oof, uh, Rene Sarisi Pasaris. I'm not going to try to spell that for you because you're never going to be able to remember it. Uh, but it is, remember the title of the video if you get a chance. And uh, uh, it, get, it got missed because the Flat Earth wasn't in the title. I only search for Flat Earth when I'm, when I'm in YouTube. So check it out if you get a chance. This one's called Flat Earth versus Ancient Artifacts and Aliens. Hi, Mark. I hope you're doing well today. Hopefully, I'll be able to reach out to you and get a response. I have a busy schedule. I'm glad you let me know that. And I just wanted to write a quick email. It will be quick and probably messy. My apology. First, I want to make it clear that I'm about 90% Flat Earth. The other 10% is probably the reason why I'm reaching out to you once in a while when I'm doing my research or watching videos. I will come across certain things that will cast doubt on FE. Aliens, for instance. Yesterday, I came across another video that talked about the MJ-12, Majestic 12. It's also talked about lunar activity that was witnessed and recorded by several scientists and everyday people. I also talked about certain artifacts found in ancient archaeological sites that suggest extraterrestrial presence on Earth at one point. My question to you is, if we live in an enclosed system, the dome, and space is not real, what are your thoughts about all this? What, alien life? Perhaps those far advanced aliens are really, yes, yes, oh, he's right there with me. I love this. This uh, has also been suggested, if it is the case, how do we wrap our heads around it? It is not hard, and I won't, I'll finish the rest of his email here in a second. It is not hard to uh, get your head around this, and that is, Every civilization in this world gets a limited amount of time. We know this. Our unbroken history only goes back about 5,000 years. And we know there's relics and ruins of the civilizations that are far, far, far older. The sunken cities off of Japan, the sunken cities off of India, the Bosnian pyramids, Bimini Road, uh, the, the real pyramids. How old are those things? They're not 5,000 years old. Um, and all that stuff. And 
I think every civilization that comes along has their duration and then they graduate, kind of like a high school class or a university, and they move on and another class comes in. And I, these older versions of us are, have been floating around. And it makes things a lot simpler. So they know they don't have to be from Mars and Venus and Jupiter. and But they could be interdimensional, potentially, if they have the right tech for it. And they're just around here with us. That's it. They're just older versions of us. And they probably look a little, quite a bit different, some of them. I mean, you know, the God plays with the sandbox from time to time. And you're kidding yourself if you think that God is only going to rearrange the continents. Messing with life forms, that's uh, that's part of the part of the fun too. Anyway, moving on with the rest of his email. I'm a fan of your work and also Rob Skiba's work. I have become more spiritual since I started the FE research. But man, oh man, there's some pretty mind-twisting stuff out there that seem to seriously challenge the Bible's flat earth theory. I disagree. I, I, I'm going to go with Rob Skiba on this one, which is there's only one Bible verse, which is Isaiah 40, 22. He who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Circle is not ball. It is not globe. It is not sphere. Circle is circle. Right? A plate, you know, is is a circle. A dining room table, sometimes circle. You can draw a circle on the ground. It doesn't mean it's a globe. So, uh, one thing I'm absolutely 100% confident about: the sun is not 93 million miles away. I'm a professional photographer with more than 30 years' experience. I'm a master photographer who understands light very well, and the light coming from the sun is certainly not coming from that far away. Uh, hope you have a great weekend. Hope to hear back from you. Cheers, Mario. And he's in. Ottawa, Ontario. I will write him back and I will tell him that I finally got to his email during this, which is QA98, I believe. This one's called Quantum Scientist Interview. Hi, Mark. I heard something on your last show with a guy that called in who had done an interview with a quantum scientist, but I did not catch the whole conversation or the context. I looked on YouTube for such an interview, but not have any recent ones. Do you have a link? for whatever it was. Thanks, Kirk. Um, no, I don't, I don't, guy who called in, are you kidding? I don't remember. <laughs> guy who had it called in and said he had talked about quantum scientists. How, why would, I don't have, no, I do not have his contact information, but thank you, Kirk, for, for asking about that. Um, sorry, there's only so many details I can, I can collect. It's only so much time in a day. This one's called, Please Let Me Know What You Think, F.E. Uprising. Okay. Hi, Mark. After listening to more of your brilliant broadcasts, I have a question and also a, a hypothesis for an uprising. I've listened to and watched quite a few YouTube videos that tell us and show us about the nuclear bombardment of the firmament. My question is, if it is true that we have waters above us and below, they are not concerned, scared, terrified about bombing the firmament that they could have destroyed our planet with a great flood from above, or did they just think they could break out into space, or maybe they tried to break the dome from the edge of Antarctica? Probably all three. Um, and realized they could not break through, decided and just map the dome instead. Yes, all these things. Yes, if you can't, if Megaton ain't going to do it, um, I mean, you, you can work with high tech all you want. You're not breaking through. It's, sorry, uh, God creates things that even basic physics uh, aren't going aren't gonna to crack under. But that's a whole other story for another time. Uh, is this, people say that if we found out we lived on a flat earth and crime war, etc., it would stop. We are humans. Humans like conflict. It's in our nature. Not everyone, but most. Therefore, I think we would have a great uprising of people bombarding the government doors and the doors of anyone in power. I think this would be the people's war or third world war. Third world war. Okay. I may not be nuclear... <laughs> It may not be nuclear, but it would be the general population bringing down the walls, governments, NASA powers that be. I hope I'm wrong, but I have a strong feeling about the world, most likely. Be the outcome of such a truth and think this is one of the main reasons they will never tell the general population the truth. Please let me know your thoughts on this. Take care. Many thanks. Kind regards. Andy. And no, no. It's, you know what? It's really interesting because I always thought that there would be a small percentage of the population that would want to uprise and, and lash out at the government. And so far, everything's been really, really peaceful because one of the side effects of getting into Flat Earth is this really great uh, ball of, of um, enthusiasm and positive energy that people just want, are just happy to talk about it. You know, they, they like that as a better world and, and they don't want to lash out. I mean, yeah, they're angry at, at NASA and the, and the people that kept the secret. 
But at the same time, they, they're, the other side is so overwhelmingly uh, positive that it, it just kind of overrides everything else. I mean, we haven't really had any incidents. Yeah, we had a few here and there. But the last time I checked, we haven't burned down a single library. So that's good. This one's called Moon Rotates in Australia. Mark, please don't mention my name if possible. Hi, Mark. These photos were all taken uh, with a week, within a week or so with a P900 and 100% uh, level tripod from the exact same location. The moon is rotating clockwise as it goes through its phases. Is this normal or have I discovered something? Thanks, mate. And yeah, the, the moon is rotating clockwise. It's you know, several people have sent me that. And I, I unfortunately, I just don't know. I don't focus a lot of time on the moon. And I mean, other than the temperature thing, but as far as the rotation of the moon, somebody, they, other people chime in if you get a chance as far as um, what, si and I'll look it up if I get a chance, hopefully, um, what's how science explains the moon's rotation like a clock, not the part, you know, yes, we only see one side of the moon, but how depending, you know, even if you're in the same place, the moon seems to, to, to kind of spin. And I'm looking at it. It's he's, this guy's in Australia, and sure enough, the face of the moon is actually moving like a clock. And I, I just haven't looked into it, but it is interesting because we are the new scientists, and we're rediscovering all sorts of fun stuff. Okay, how many emails? Okay, we're gonna we're winding down here. We're gonna see if we can find something good to end on. Uh, this one's called No Subject. Greetings, Mark. I watch your YouTube videos. Epic speech by Mark Sargent, Flat Earth International Conference Canada 2018 and the Flat Earth Clues introduction. A couple of years ago, after I got into a discussion about the Flat Earth with my wife's son, a law student in Indianapolis, I started looking at the subject in earnest. Initially, I summarily dismissed his argument about the Flat Earth by quoting Isaiah 40.22. Ah, see where I go there? And I will read it because he put it in here. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the... We should have like angel music in the background. Circle of the earth and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretch, stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth... Wow, it's, it's a tongue twister for me, sorry. Spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. However, after our discussion, I got thinking about the word circle and thought, wait a minute, while all globes are circular, not all circular things are globes. Mm -hmm. And that started me researching the subject until I became convinced that the heliocentric assertion is false. I'm attaching a couple of my essays. Uh, one's called the National Association for Satan's Agenda. Ah, that's, that's an acronym right there for NASA, might interest you, even though you have no doubt you will have already seen from other sources the things which I wrote. My purpose in writing is was to have something compact and short that I'm able to hand people to get them thinking. Regards, um, Dr. A. Waldell. Cool. Thank you. That's great. All right. We're not going to end on that one. We're getting, we're getting there. This one's called Hey Mark. Hey, Mark, I finished watching all 22 videos. I'm very intrigued. I have a question for you. You stated that the picture below is picture, picture. Caroline keeps saying, you gotta say picture. You gotta enunciate that C. It's like, whatever. Uh, below is what everyone sees when they fly. I have flown a lot. I've seen an entire ground or cloud coverage spreading, uh, depending on the weather. Why do you make this blanket statement? You can see the same cloud coverage in parts of the Earth in the picture below. That's from James. Oh yeah, yeah, James. He's he doesn't he's a globalist, and he says, "Oh look, here's an astronaut picture with cloud cover." Yeah, that's not my point. My point was is that picture that particular picture that was sent that I that you're seeing there with the horizon that was just taken from an airplane at thirty thousand feet, flat horizon. And yet, all uh, the only pictures we see with any curvature are from the United States military. Sorry, a little bit of a credibility issue there. This one's called Flat Earth Plate. And it was sent by Jared, and it is a plate of a cool looking Audi in Indianapolis. And he had a custom front plate made because it varies from state to state. Sometimes there are states that don't require front plates. They only require back plates. So for his front plate, he made a custom flat earth with nine letters. It's this giant custom plate on the front of this uh, really cool white Audi. And I will be using, it's already in my uh, slideshow, uh, my compilations uh, as of recently. And it's going to be the thumbnail for my December uh, license plate compilation we've got so many so if you have a flat earth license plate 
and you haven't sent it to me, please do send it to me and I will put it in the compilations. I put it to music. I think they're very, very cool. And again, shows, you know, shows you're committed to the cause. You're hardcore. You're willing to put yourself out there. Moving on. Uh, which one are we going to end on? I'm going to find a good one. This one looks like it's got a lot of math in it. Yeah, let's read it anyway. This one's called Some Questions. Uh, Mark, I'm actually at level 14 inches. Level 14 inches, and some of your observations are really amazing. It's true. We take just for real what we are told, but driving up New Zealand's west coast, I took some pictures and wondered at a certain point what I could see and put on picture the mount range, mountain range at a distance of about 300 kilometers standing on a cliff that's 30 meters above sea level these mountains are maximum 2,000 meters high and near the Tas tasman sea after your videos i looked up on wikipedia and i should have been at least 4,000 meters high to be able to see these mountains the same happened at mount ruapehu at, I know I butcher pronunciations in other countries. I'm sorry, guys. At 2,000 meters in clear weather, I took pictures of Mount Taranaki, 250 kilometers away. Maybe I looked down on the round earth. I always wondered why all the flights from any air airport in Europe fly over the North Pole to the United States instead of straight over the Atlantic as Lindbergh did some time ago. Or had he to take the long run due to the cold at the pole. Oh, good point. Your observation about the astronaut suits is amazing. No one questions this, and you're right. It can't work. So why do they make us believe it works? Well, because we buy it. Because we don't teach basic physics in school. Nobody remembers physics from school. We don't, We it's part, you know, we learn history, we learn math, uh, you know, reading, reading, writing, and arithmetic. That's, that's what we learn, uh, especially in the States. We don't, you know, physics is not part of that. And part of me thinks it's deliberate so that we don't question. Anyway, uh, do you have any idea where the crop circles come from? Uh, yeah, I think they're from older civilizations and they're just having fun with us. And they're just kind of showing us our logo, their logos from, from thousands of years ago. Uh, and please don't tell me the story of men at night with wooden tools. No, it's definitely not those guys in Europe. You want to look at some cool crop. And I know people haven't talked about crop circles in a while. In a while. You want to look at some cool crop circles, look at the uh, the Milk Hill one from, oh God, years ago. Um, it covered half a million square feet over uneven terrain, and it was gorgeous. I mean, I could spend a week with Photoshop and probably have a hard time just drawing it, and this thing was done over half a million square feet, you know, a stadium area it was in, on a, in a grassy field. It was gorgeous. It just beautiful. Um, I saw the three of them near Munich between 2012 and 2016, and no man can do that. Uh, the last one was in an area where Bavarians are very traditional, don't believe in anything that could be out of space, mainly the type of guys in the Middle West of America. Usually the farmers try to cut the crop as soon as possible to prevent the weirdos from coming um, and ruining the rest of their harvest. The last farmer was so amazed about the structure and the perfect lines, symmetry and structure that he even organized a hydraulic ramp so that we could have a better view. Thank you for sharing your observations and opening eyes to see what is so obvious. Cheers, Claudia. You know what? Let's end on that one. You know, it's a crop circle one. It's kind of fun. Uh, if you, if you haven't you haven't looked up crop circles recently, and I know it's changed over the years because now people can just Photoshop crop circles onto just about any picture that you can think of. Uh, but there's some really really great stuff out there, and I still have some of my favorite photos from years ago. I was I was fascinated with them. And uh, I think it's one of those little hints, one of those little breadcrumbs that people drop on us and it doesn't break the protocol. You know, they can't interact with us directly, but drawing things like that, it's kind of fun. Anyway, that's it. That's all we're going to do for today. I'll pick this up tomorrow and we're still working through the beginning part of October. We'll, we'll get there eventually. So uh, thank you for everybody that wrote in today and recently and who will write in in the future. Remember, you can send your emails to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Until next time, guys, stay flat.